Today I want to show how I do my art using a new digital medium. It's been around for a number of years, but in the beginning it wasn't really legitimized. Now, over the past few years, work done on tablets and computers are recognized as legitimate art. Why do I use technology when I could use traditional art methods or canvas or all that? I live with a, a condition called fibromyalgia. As such, fibromyalgia is a uh, lifelong illness that leaves me uh, with chronic fatigue and uh, severe pains and so some tasks I could do for short period of times and doing the traditional work involves a lot of uh, setting up and preparing which is fine for most people but when I start preparing the canvas getting all my tools ready and my paint brushes it not only uh, it fatigues me so by the time I'm ready to start my artwork I'm really tired, but since I've discovered the usefulness of a tablet, or in this case an iPad, it frees me from all that, so I can get straight at it. So this kind of reduces the stress level that I get, because when I do art, I do art part of my, my mental health therapy. Start with a clean slate and what I'm going to do is create a new painting. I choose the color of my canvas, whatever I want. Today I'm going to go with something called eggshell and that's basically my uh, paper texture. Just like one would choose the canvas when you go into an art supply store. Some people like smoother, some people like more texture to their canvas. Mine, I like it in between. So today I'm going to do what is what I call metal art on a ca digital canvas. So I start with one of the several tools that I use, and I'm not referring to the tools on my app here where I do have different uh, paint brushes and uh, all sorts of different uh, textures I could apply with it, but I'll start with a base background on this. And then I use a different app to create more designs on the first artwork that I have for today. So I choose the color or the brush that I like. So I'm going to go with this. I'm going to pick a, a warm back. So I'm going to so pick something like rose. And then I change the size of my metal brush which is actually a roller, and then I create the back. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I just let it flow. As you could see, by using metallic colors, it's like literally you have metal in your paint. And you get brush strokes that otherwise wouldn't be normally possible with regular paint. And this is one of the things that I do. Now that I've got a, a basic element, this is just like a sampling of what I do. Then I save this, save as. I'm going to call it Metal Leaves. Save. Okay. 
And then the other thing I will do is I'll export it as a PNG, which is a high resolution one. And then I'll save the image. This is the genius part. Now that I got it in my photo roll, and I just go down here, here it is, I could preview it, and voila, this is what it looks like. But I want to add more elements to this. So what am I going to do? I am going to open up a palette of tools that I have. As I said earlier, it's not a matter of having different brushes. It's a matter of having different apps that does different things. Not, there is no one, such thing as one app that does everything. So I go back here, go to graphic, import, import from photos. And here it is. There's the object that I wanted. I go in here and then I could add certain elements. So now I just have to choose the type of brush that I want and how much pressure I want. So in this case, I've got different types of brushes and I want something that is more fanciful. So I'll pick this one and then I go there I can change the width and I can make it smoother or sharper. So I'm gonna go with something in between. I'm gonna pick the color that I want. Oh, nice bold red. And voila, so now I can start adding the elements here. This tool, or I should say this app, allows me to do layers. So I could have a base background image and then I could add layers and then change the layers as needed. So one of my favorite tools that I love doing is what you call mirroring effect. to the arrival of the Apple Pencil, it was mostly done with my finger. Never got the results I really wanted, but since the Apple Pencil came along, it allows you to fine tune by even changing, just like a natural pencil or a brush, you angle it according to what you want to do. So in this case, by taking a wide brush and I change my flow, and the thickness of my brush. You can dramatically change the look, what you want to do. In the past, when the first, the first iPads came out, it was about $850. You only get about 64 gigs of uh, space on the uh, first iPad that came out. Yes, initially I had the funds to do it because I was still working. And at that time I wasn't considering using it as art because I was using it more for the work that I was doing. But later on, when uh, my disability started to get worse and I had to take uh, time off of work, I realized that well, I had to do something and I can't just not do anything. And I was trying to do my art, art the traditional way. And though it was okay, but I started looking at what, what can I do with my uh, iPad that I have. But Getting the sixth generation iPad was close enough to a Pro, way faster, and can handle the newer apps that were more precise and had more functions and features. But what was the change was the Apple Pencil. And this is what it looks like, what it does. It, it's the first generation Pencil works only with uh, iPad 6th generation and above and this is what was the game changer and the pencil cost about 
149 Canadian, something like that. So when you're dealing with apps that you pay once, that's usually the best deal. But don't just go willy-nilly. Try their free version first, test it out, see if you like it. You might not have saving capabilities or you might not get all the brushes, but it gives you a chance to try it out and evaluate. Once you're satisfied, go ahead, take the plunge. Put that 10 bucks on the app that they sell it for or the 30 bucks. I paid for two of these apps. I put in about $30 each. So that was well worth it. I paid one one month I got it and then I waited another month and I got the second app for this. And then I bought smaller apps gradually throughout the summer because since the COVID started then of course uh, things were getting difficult uh, to do outside of the house. So I had to do stuff that would keep me occupied at home and still allow me to continue doing my art. Another piece of advice is don't give up on your dreams. It might seem at first, doodle, do whatever, let it flow, and then save it. Later on, you can always continue where you left off, or you'll have a new inspiration and you add to it. And I've seen people do portraitures using their the tablets or digital devices. And every person does things differently. Only you will know what works for you and when you start doing it. Mm -hmm.